Let us all stand and uh, let's take this moment to wish each other a good morning and welcome one another to our celebration of the Mass. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Today we celebrate Thursday in the 19th week of Ordinary Time. And our opening hymn for today's Mass is number 325, 325. Loving and forgiving. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness. Loving and forgiving are you. All my being, bless the Lord. Bless the holy name of God. All my being, bless the Lord, remembering the goodness of God. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, Loving and forgiving are you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us take a moment to humble ourselves, calling to mind our sins, and preparing ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You seek those who are lost. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You forgive our sins. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. You teach us to forgive others. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know I am with you as I was with Moses. Now command the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant to come to a halt in the Jordan when you reach the edge of the waters. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord, your God. This is how we will know that there is a living God in your midst, who at your approach will dispossess the Canaanites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of the whole earth will precede you into the Jordan. When the soles of the feet of the priests carrying the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of the whole earth, touch the water of the Jordan, it will cease to flow. For the water flowing down from upstream will halt in a solid bank. The people struck their tents to cross the Jordan, with the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant ahead of them. No sooner had these priestly bearers of the Ark waded in the waters at the edge of the Jordan, which overflows all its banks during the entire season of the harvest. Then the waters flowing from upstream halted. 
backing up in a solid mass for a very great distance indeed. From Adam, a city in the direction of Zarathan, while those flowing downstream toward the salt sea of the Arabah disappeared entirely. Thus the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all Israel crossed over on dry ground, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord remained motionless on dry ground in the bed of the Jordan until the whole nation had completed the passage. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Alleluia. Alleluia. When Israel came forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of alien tongue, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his domain. Alleluia. The sea beheld and fled, Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like the lambs of the flock. Alleluia. Why is it, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back? You mountains, that you skip like rams? You hills, like the lambs of the flock? Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Lord, be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim this gospel worthy of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Let your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave the loan. When the, that servant had left, he found another fellow servant who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when the fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you, unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judah across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Forgiveness is one of the most difficult things for us as human beings to do. There's many reasons for this. Because we have felt hurt, we felt offended. Somebody has spoken behind our backs without us knowing. Some kind of great injustice has been done to us. Maybe there's a deep wound from childhood. And it's very difficult for us as human beings to forgive for all of these reasons. But I want to suggest there's an even greater reason why it's so hard for us to forgive, why it's so easy for us to nurse a grudge or to hold on to resentment. The reason is because forgiveness is not necessarily a human quality. Forgiveness is a divine quality, a godly quality. Think about humans. Our typical response when we're hurt, like as Jesus says in the Gospels, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. If you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. If you hit me, I'm going to hit you back even harder. That's the typical human response. That's how we tend to respond. But how does God respond? He's the opposite. You hurt me, you sinned against me. I turn back in forgiveness and mercy towards you. Think about the words that Jesus says. Right before he's about to be put to death, right before he's about to be crucified, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And then remember the words to his disciples after his resurrection. They had abandoned him. They fled from him at the foot of the cross. He comes back. He appears to them. And instead of a word of vengeance, the first words that come out of Jesus' mouth are, peace be with you. Forgiveness is a divine quality. It's a godly quality. Peter asks Jesus in today's gospel, Master, my brother sins against me. How many times should I forgive him? Up to seven? Jesus says, no. But 77 times. That is to say, perfectly completely, without condition. Humanly speaking, that's impossible. Only God can do that. And that's why today, in our Mass, maybe there's somebody, maybe you feel hurt. Somebody here, you feel hurt. Somebody's hurt you. Maybe you're nursing a resentment or a grudge. Maybe there's somebody you haven't forgiven. Humanly speaking, it's impossible. We have to ask God for the grace. Lord, help me to forgive even as you forgive. Not just seven times, but 77 times, perfectly, completely, without condition. Let us pray to God that as his people who have experienced his forgiveness, we may bring the joy of forgiveness to the world. Our response, merciful King, let your forgiveness flow. Merciful King, let your forgiveness flow. That the people of God set free by the blood of Christ may not be divided in factions, but live in tolerance and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful King, let your forgiveness flow. That those embittered by injuries and wrongdoings may cast away resentment from their hearts and be open to the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Merciful King, let your forgiveness flow. That those among us who find it difficult to forgive may realize God's generous mercy for everyone and may be able to forgive from our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful King, let your forgiveness flow. That those of us who feel deep wounds of physical and spiritual injuries may find healing in the Lord's forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful King, let your forgiveness flow. That the faithful departed may be forgiven of their sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful King, let your forgiveness flow. The intention of this Mass is offered for the eternal repose of Sebastian and Maria Aceves. We also pray in thanksgiving for Janine Algebra and Brian Gomez. We pray for our sick, Hilda Sanchez. And we pray for the eternal repose of Melodina Santos and Linho Yusef. And now in a moment of silence, we offer to the Lord the prayers of our own hearts, especially the prayers asking for the grace of forgiveness to those who have hurt us or offended us. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful, Merciful King, King, let, let your, your forgiveness, forgiveness flow. flow. God, our Father, we know how hard it is for us to forgive one another. Give us the grace, the divine gift, to be able to forgive not just seven times, but perfectly 77 times. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by your Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis uncelli et terra, gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, Santiago de Compostela, and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, through the death gave life to the world. Free me of this human soul, the body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your commandments. Never let me be parted from them. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray now our prayer of spiritual communion. 
and union with our brothers and sisters online and with those who cannot receive our Lord today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. The communion antiphon. The bread that I will give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn now to Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. To Saint Joseph, hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ was secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and all of your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is 492, 492, How Great Thou Art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great